looks pretty good. All right, except it's not alcohol, I swear. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that wherever you are, wherever that is in this huge world, you are healthy, safe, and sane in this quarantine situation, if you are still quarantined, because I think some people are now back out in the free world. Not really sure what's going on, but regardless of all of that, I hope that you are doing well, because I'm so excited about the response that you guys had to my two-part story time, best and worst celeb experiences. Honestly, it was just a collection of stories from my 15 year career as an entertainment news reporter and producer. So since you guys loved that, shall I call it a mini series so much, I thought, what the heck, let's do it again. Today I thought it would be fun to fill you guys in on all of the many celebs that I interviewed before they were famous. So as you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, I used to work at a place called Clever, which is huge on YouTube. And I was actually one of the people that started the company 12 years ago in a garage, but that's a whole other story. So that being said, if you think about some of the most famous people in Hollywood, in the music world, on YouTube right now, 12 years ago, they were all children, and 12 years ago, most of them were not famous. And because Clever was something that no one had, quite frankly, ever heard of and did not have any respect for <laughs> when we first started it, we were so down to interview people that no one had ever heard of. We'd be like, oh, sure, you were a guest star at a Disney show? Yes, we would love to have a hard-hitting one-on-one with you or like, oh, you made a song in your garage? Yeah, come on in for an interview. That being said, the people I'm going to talk about on the list today were actually already working and doing super legitimate things when we talked to them. So I'm not surprised at all that some of these people are incredibly successful and very, very famous today. Before I jump in though, if you guys like these story times, hit the comment section and let me know. And if you're new here, please be sure to subscribe so that I can keep on sharing all of my weird and embarrassing stories with you forever, maybe, at this point, if that's what it's come to. Let's kick it off with 2010. This is a story that I've actually talked about a decent amount in the past, but this was the very first time that we ever interviewed the true business entrepreneur icon that she has become now at this point, Shay Mitchell. I also have to point out that this was Shay's first ever interview when she landed the role on Pretty Little Liar of Emily Fields. We had her into the studio and interviewed her because we loved the concept of the show and we had a great relationship with ABC Family at the time, which no longer exists and is now free form. But we had this really great interview with Shay. I remember she came in, she was wearing like a floral shirt and some jeans. She absolutely had no entourage with her. I think she might have had her manager with her, but that was it. There was like no glam squad, no publicist, just her, me, and Dana, and probably one person shooting the video and this tiny little room and we just had a really great chat. I think probably because we were all like kind of in the same age category and had a lot in common. It was just a really fun interview. What's it like to see yourself in a 20 foot poster or billboard? It's pretty crazy. I mean, I think even just walking in, you know, like in the mall and stuff, yeah. you're walking and then all of a sudden, you know those ones that rotate? Yes. And then I was just going to the movies with a friend and then when you walk by and it goes like this and it's Pretty Little Liars and I was like, oh, <gasps> that's weird. <laughs> Who is that? You know, it's crazy. And Pretty Little Liars was her first big job that she had ever landed. So maybe that was a big contributing factor as to why she was so down to earth. But I can tell you this, after interviewing her so many times after that over the years, she has never ever changed. Every time I see her, she is still sweet as ever, so down to earth, so kind, and I think that is why she has been so successful. I mean, one of the reasons why she's been so successful. And then, and this is like the craziest thing ever, but to bring it full circle, when I launched my YouTube channel like a year and a half ago, the first ever person that I had on my channel as like a collab was Shay Mitchell. I have known you for so many years. You really have. You were my I, first interviewer. I was your first interview. I just have to thank you for always being so lovely. Oh my gosh. You are a good person. Big things are coming. I gotta say that Shay was super, super sweet before she was famous and flash forward now 10 years. Gosh, that was in 2010 when we met her. She is still just as kind. So just evidence that great people do exist in this world. Oh my gosh. Up next, we have got to talk about just the ongoing relationship that we had and still have with Bailey 
Madison. Do you guys know Bailey Madison? I'm sure that you do because at this point she has been on so many TV shows and in so many movies. I feel like she should put an, out an album soon because she's really talented with music as well. But we interviewed her for the first time, I want to say back in 2009. I very vividly remember interviewing her at a red carpet. It was not even for Clever. It was for another outlet called Hollywood TV that I was working for at the time. I do remember incredibly vividly interviewing this absolutely adorable little girl which is wild because now she's like a full-blown adult woman it's been so fun to watch her grow up but at the time she was really well known for doing film work she was in the movie brothers which was like I think Oscar nominated starring Jake Gyllenhaal and she was so memorable because her dramatic acting skills at such a young age were through the roof and I remember after that once we had started clever having her come into the studio and she was just like the most likable kid I had ever met in my life when the cameras were not rolling. She was like, let's have a dance party. Let's hang out. Let's have fun. I felt like I was babysitting the coolest kid I had ever met that I want to be friends with. And then flash forward, we followed her career for like every single move she made. She was on Wizards of Waverly Place, which was so, so fun for her because I think she was actually a fan of the show because she was a kid at the time, without a doubt. Just like Shay Mitchell, never showed up with an entourage. In fact, I think she was always with her mom. She has an amazing mom, which I think is also the reason why she is a golden human being. She just has the best people around her. And then she would also have her publicist, Chris Rossi, who was an absolute legend and icon. He used to bring all of the celebrities to Clever in those early days. I just have so many great memories from her. And I do think that in our lifetime, she will, if she wants to, go on to become like the next Meryl Streep. Oh my God. In the same vein as Bailey Madison, we have to talk about Bella Thorne. When I first started covering red carpets, before I even worked at Clever, I remember seeing this energetic, beautiful child at every red carpet. I ever went to. I'm not kidding you guys. I swear to you on everything. Bella Thorne was on the red carpet almost every single night. She had to have been like nine or 10 years old. I don't even know if she was in the double digits yet, but I can tell you that she has always had the most amazing energy. You can tell why people love her because she, from a very young age, was very special in that she had this like magnetic energy and she was always smiling and always laughing and always looked so so cute. There was nothing more hilarious than when you showed up to a red carpet and all of the children looked significantly more put together than you did. That was absolutely the case for me every single time I went to work. But I remember interviewing Bella Thorne when she was on the show Dirty Sexy Money where she played one of the kids to one of the main actors. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this girl has such a great vibe. I would love to see her in something that like let her show that off a little bit more. And then obviously cut to a few years later and she and yet another icon, Zendaya, land the show Shake It Up on Disney Channel. And I mean, from there, the rest is history. But I do have to say, that Bella Thorne back in those days was so, so, so sweet. She was also with her siblings a lot. I do remember that. And I wonder what they're up to. Okay, but let's move right on to Zendaya. I think it just makes sense to talk about Bella Thorne and talk about Zendaya because they were the two geniuses on the show Shake It Up. Shake It Up was such a huge show for Disney Channel. When I think about that era in time, there were so many amazing shows on Disney and everybody was like, oh my gosh, what's gonna be the next big thing? And then in comes Bella Thorne and freaking Zendaya, who even then, her name was Zendaya Coleman. I remember calling her that then. But you just knew that there was this like essence surrounding her where she was like a one name person. There's like Cher, Madonna, Beyonce, and now we have Zendaya. And I can say from being around her and her presence, she has this like quiet yet beautiful strength and power. And she's always had that, even from the time she was a kid. She came to the Clever TV studio for the first time when I wanna say she was about 13 or 14. And again, no entourage. One of her parents was always with her. And I think during that time, her dad was with her a lot. And they were just like so adorable. They had the cutest relationship. You could tell he was really looking out for her and making sure that she was still just like a good kid and that it wasn't all going to her head. And it was 
was so fun to watch her really have such a wild breakout from that show. She went on to sign a record deal and go on tour and she had that song, I think it was called Put That Song On Replay, <laughs> something like that. It was such a jam. I still have it on my computer. I remember seeing her on red carpet so many times after that because she is a tall woman. She has such an amazing presence and I love that she doesn't shy away from that. She's always really owned who she is and there's just so much strength and confidence in what she stands for. And again, I think that's why she has such a like strong magnetism around her that you could see even when she was a kid. It was super obvious. Like so many of the people I've already talked about, I think another reason that she has managed to have such a long career, even at her young age, is that she has good people around her. Her parents are awesome people. They're always with her. And she was just like a really, really cute kid. I have this picture that is so cute and it's of me and Bella Thorne and Zendaya and I look like I'm like their nanny or something. It's Zendaya and Bella, ladies. Hi. Those two are actresses, singers, triple threats, whatever you want to call them, that I think will go absolutely as far as they want to in the business world because they've always had that charisma and just that like sweet spirit that I think is so important. Oh yes, and then Fifth Harmony, who I did kind of already talk about a little bit in my first story time. We did have the first ever interview with them when they became a group. It was a Google Hangout, like I talk about in the other video, which I will link to in the info section below. Setting up that interview just from a technology standpoint was a massive, massive mess, but we went on to do this hangout with them live, which is on YouTube still. You can go watch it for like 45 minutes and it was really, really fun. None of them were famous. I mean, they were kind of famous because they had been on reality TV, but like no one knew who Camila Cabello was. No one knew who Lauren Haregi was. No one knew who Normani was. Like you get the point. Now, all five of them are household names in and of themselves. But at the time, Fifth Harmony was like, oh yeah, those like cute girls who were on the reality TV show, X Factor. Oh yeah, they're cool. But like they absolutely were not being stalked by paparazzi. They could still go outside. They were all living with their parents. Like it was a totally different time and place. And from there, I did go on to interview them so many times over the years. And also what I wanna say is that to me, they were always kind, they would always give a hug. They would always greet me with so much energy and love. And that was always the case. They never ever changed. Even though, you know, whatever they might've been going through as a group, I always had the best experience with them. And I have so many fun memories. One of my all time favorite memories with Fifth Harmony was I was at this event and I was backstage and they popped in to do an interview and I had come up with this like really weird game called Truth or Dance where you either had to answer a really juicy question, AKA the truth, or you had to do a dance and I think almost all of them decided to like do the truth and the dance because the dancing was so fun and then Camila doing, I can't remember what dance move she was doing, ended up like going viral on Vine at the time. But that was just like indicative of who they were. They were super famous by that point, but they were still just like teenage girls or like girls in their early 20s trying to have a good time and enjoy life. And that's always the vibe that I got from them. So I'm absolutely not surprised at all that each of them individually has had so much success. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think we're gonna see so much more from all of them and I'm here for it. Oh, this is one of my favorites. So Glee was one of my favorite shows. I never missed an episode. When season one came out, I didn't even know about it and I ended up binging like 13 episodes in one weekend. So like you get the point, I loved, loved, loved everything about the show. I had all of the music. So when Grant Gustin joined this show, I think his character's name was like Sebastian or something. Do you guys remember him on the show? When he joined the show, he made such a splash with his character. And I remember being like, oh my gosh, Dana, we have got to get this guy in because I swear to you, he is going to be super famous. He's so talented. He can sing, he can dance, he can act. He's obviously looks like a Ken doll. Anywho, I can't remember how we reached out to him because at the time, he was not very well known. He did not have a publicist. He might've had an agent or a manager. Honestly, I might've even reached out to him just by like sliding into his DMs on Twitter and being like, hey, do you wanna come on our show? Whatever the case was, he ended up coming in 
by himself. He had no people with him whatsoever. It was me and Dana and Grant Gustin. We had a great interview with him. He was so sweet, so cool, so down to earth, and also, side note, very grateful for the opportunity to be on a show like Glee and be able to come in and do an interview. And that's not always the vibe that you would get. Some people like doing press and stuff felt like a job for them. And then other people were just like, you could tell still really excited to have any opportunity. And that was definitely the case for him. After he left, we were just like, wow, he is gonna be a star. Cut to a few years later and he is the star of Flash on the CW which ends up becoming this huge 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 thing. It shot in Canada so unfortunately we were never able to make it up to the set to do any interviews or anything like that but I'll never forget I was at the Golden Globes and this might have been the year that the Flash really blew up and I had like the worst place. I mean even though Clever was big by that point we were still on the internet so we were at the Golden Globes and I was placed right behind a pole like no one could even see me. No one even knew I was there. And I remember like catching the eye of Grant and he saw me and I was like, oh my gosh. Cause I had interviewed like literally zero people because no one could even see that a reporter was standing behind this pole. So Grant comes over, we have a great interview. So excited for him that he was so successful at that point and had the show that was like the hottest thing on TV. I mean, hello, he was at the Golden Globes. And I just remember being so grateful that a, <laughs> someone finally talked to me at the Globes because no one could even see me and B I always loved and was so impressed with the people that we had on Clever before they were famous and then when they did become ultra famous the fact that they would still make the time to talk to us I just thought was like so classy and so cool and so awesome and something that I have always really appreciated and respected and he's one of the good ones he's gonna be an even bigger star mark my words up next oh Yes, R5. So R5, I have to say, is no longer together as a band. They are still a family, <laughs> but they are no longer a band at this point. However, the reason that I'm putting them on this list is because when I interviewed them, they were definitely not famous. And now Ross Lynch, who was in the band and the lead singer, has now gone on to be like really successful as an actor. He was also an actor back then, but I feel like he's really started to catch his stride as an actor in just the last few years. He's on Sabrina on Netflix. He was also in that Jeffrey Dahmer film that was like an indie movie that got a lot of really great reviews. But back in what year? Back in 2012, no one, even myself, and I was so engrossed in this like young pop culture world, no one knew who R5 was. I kind of had an idea of who they were before I went to interview them only because they always were all wearing matching clothes and 99% of the time, all of their clothes were were pink. So like that's not something you forget very easily. So I remember it was like a Friday afternoon at like two o'clock and I was smoked. I was so freaking tired. I was working like 20 hours a day every day at that point in time. I remember like my boss or somebody being like, Joslyn, we got this interview off with this band called R5. It's like all the way out in Burbank, but can you go do it? We really want to get this interview because we think it's going to be really good. So I did a little research and I looked around on, on the internet of what I could find from R5 and I was like, oh, I don't want to get in my car. I'm so annoyed. I'm so, so tired. But I was like, fine, I'll do it. And then wait for it. I looked down at what I was wearing that day and yes, I did have on a pink shirt and I felt like it was the universe aligning and telling me that I should go interview this family band called R5. So I boogie on over to Radio Disney, which is where the band was hanging out for the day. And I met this band of five members all of whom had names that started with the letter R. I was immediately so confused. I was like, wait, who is who? What's going on? Also, almost everybody had their hair bleached blonde at the time, or at least half of them. Very confusing. Anyways, that was just the beginning of what went on to be like this very long relationship that I had with R5. I still follow all of them and I've seen Rydell around a bunch, but years later, I actually went on to like essentially stalk them <laughs> for six months because I produced this little mini series going on on the road with them. I was not in the show at all, but I basically went on tour with them and got to see what their life was like behind the scenes when they were kind of at their peak as a band. I was so impressed with them. I've been impressed with them since day one. The very first time I met them at Radio Disney, they were all so kind. I think maybe their mom was there who you can tell is just like the leader of the pack. She is the reason that all of them are so sweet and lovely and she's so encouraging. And I remember asking her like, why did you name all of your kids to have like the same first letter of their name? 
are. And she said, I wanted my kids to always feel like they were already on a team, like they were already a part of something, like they were already included. That's something I've never forgotten. It's obviously really stuck with me. And I think that's just what everybody wants is to be a part of something. And they definitely were. And even though the band is not together, a lot of them are still collaborating on things. They're obviously very much still a very tight knit family. I'm super, super excited to see what all of them do. Rydell's actually on YouTube now with her fiance. Congratulations, girl. It's just been fun to see their careers as a group back then and also as individuals really version and grow because they haven't changed either. Like even with fame, they've always still had time for the little people like myself. You know what I mean? Quick interruption from the future. In case you guys haven't noticed, this video has very quickly gotten incredibly long. So I decided to, yes, make it into two parts. So if you want to see the second part of this video, and I hope that you do, please subscribe and join the party because the second video will be coming very, very soon. Also hit the comment section and let me know if there's any specific celeb or story time or clever experience or career experience or what ever that you want to hear me talk about. Like that one time I was in a beauty pageant. Yeah, Miss California pageant. That happened. Or maybe some of my cringy modeling career days. Honestly, the opportunities to talk about me embarrassing myself are literally endless. Anyways, hit the comment section, let me know, and I will see you soon. Bye guys.